Hello, welcome back to Tarot by Andy. Thank you for being here. This is my vibrational reading. Please do your own research for entertainment purposes and allegedly. Wow, a little tongue tied there. Hope you guys are doing good. I was doing a little bit of looking up to the super ego. Yeah, the super ego in tarot. There is a super ego in tarot. The super ego in tarot, where you got the, the id ego and super ego. It is I, myself. Then they've got the ego trying to take over. Then you got your super ego that just can really crash a person down. That's where you become malignant. Um, the super ego in tarot would be the king of wands in reverse. Uh, the king of wands upright has a very larger than life ego to begin with. But when he's in reverse, his super ego is completely taken over. Same thing with the page of wands in reverse. That's like the child version where they start out young with a very bruised ego. Uh, it could be like really dynamic, you know, high energy child who ends up crashing down uh, their confidence to the point where they allow their super ego to take over. So it's the page of wands in reverse, the king of wands in reverse are very, very ego bound, very temperamental, very dictator, bully, tyrannical energy, both in the page of wands and the king of wands, both of them in reverse, uh, it can be very, actually quite um, dangerous because both of them lack a true authentic self. Both of them have dropped their their ego in a good way because we all have a good ego where, you know, it kind of waxes and wanes and having a little bit of an ego is a good thing. But when that super ego is driving you, uh, nobody wants to be around them. They're completely dictators. It's a young dictator or an older dictator with the king versus the page in the reverse position. So those are some of like your, your real ego bound. So I was thinking, you know, they want to protect the ego. We all want to protect our ego, but they go to extreme to a total, basically malignant narcissism. I would say the king of wands in reverse and the page of wands are both uh, probably malignant narcissists. Anyways, going back to also with the sociopathic stare, uh, the black eyes, all of that. It's about protecting the ego too. Uh, as we know, they go into that lifeless, doll-eyed, shark eyes, you know, uh, in Jaws. In Jaws, you know, the, the Jaws movie, uh, Robert Shaw talked about it. And it's, um, you know, basically it, it looks demonic, but really apparently it's not demonic. It's the blood pressure and it's the anger and it's the rage. And really truly what it is, it's a narc collapse. They're having a narc collapse. So I'm kind of wondering about Megan's mom, Megan's mom. So I just want to do a little drip feed on the super ego for right now, because I was looking into the super ego and they are not friends. They will not be loyal. They will not be your friend. They will always lie. They will act like they're telling it like it is, but they're lying and they're not fun to be with. They think they're fun. They'll put on a mask and they'll pretend to be fun. So they'll pretend they're outgoing. They'll pretend they're interested in you. They will pretend they're interested in everything you're interested in, but they lack authentic self. So anytime you see that King of Wands and Page of Wands in reverse, they really have no impact or vision. It's complete um, fit ma mask on. Both of them wear a mask, so you don't want to trust them. Uh, for those of you that are studying tarot, um, you know, and I've said this the other day that in order for it to work, ignorance is required. This is why a lot of the... Um, malignants fail in life because they need ignorant people that they can manipulate so smart people i this is why megan's gonna fail at finding a a which would be a king of swords man she wants a really intelligent guy kind of like have a lawyer type of guy so she could probably have him on speed dial for all her lawsuits one malignant chick that i used to know she always had, she, she kept a boyfriend on the side. She had a couple of them. Uh, she kept one on the side and he was a lawyer. He was always on speed dial and he, and, and I now know in hindsight, didn't know then cause I didn't know what I know now. Back then I was ignorant. Just F FYI. I didn't know what I was involved in until all hindsight. Like most people, when you start to study what the hell happened now in hindsight, all this is coming to me. So it's all in hindsight. I didn't know it at the time. I was ignorant. It required my ignorance and it was there, okay? But it's not there now. So once people get get the intelligence of all this, they can't play people. So good luck playing people. This is why a really king of swords, intelligent man, or a king of pentacles upright, a self-made man who has it all, intelligent, high stress job, 
high you know respect in the world is not going to take someone who pisses and moans and acts like a damsel in distress how is he going to take someone around who's publicly known to piss and moan and feel good about having her on his arm it's not going to happen they get they get unmasked especially by a highly intelligent self-made person they've been out too much in the world so this is why she's not making it this is why the likelihood of her finding anyone is slim to none it's very slim to none why would the world give her what she wants when they can spot it people back off go well i see what i see just like me i knew what megan was just from photographs uh really photographs gave it away for me that's all it takes Someone can see that in the eyes in a photograph and can actually pick it up, pick up on it. Um, and, and this is where she's screwed. So I don't see any hope for her. Her ego is so challenged right now. Um, she, the only thing she could lean on is a hero complex guy. But a hero complex guy um, is going to be very, very broken, shattered man. And the problem with that is she's not going to respect them. Yes, she likes being controlled, you know, in control. That's Harry, what she has now. But the game, it gets it gets boring. It's not fun uh, because it's not a challenge because she can crush them too easily. So when they do get that guy who's got the hero complex, they're going to get bored of them because when they can walk all over them, it takes away the challenge feel. They like the challenge feel. So that's why they want that high sword guy of the king of swords because he can mentally challenge her and mentally feed her brain and then she can mirror off that intelligence for her own they can never be happy with a hero complex guy he's not intelligent enough she won't respect him because he won't know what she is and he's too stupid to figure it out so she's going to want to walk all over them dump them discard them and carry on and be the eight of cups walking away for empowerment and then she won't find it because she'll never find it because she's a dr that's the drifter card. And then she's going to realize I screwed up and want the atonement. And then she's going to have to find someone else because she crashed that one down. Where do I look now? And that's really what ends up happening to them. Uh, I've seen it in real time. I've seen it in real life. And I see it in tarot. So, yeah. They really do sabotage themselves. And many of these antisocials can and will land in prison. And I do say that the prison card, you know, um, doesn't have to just be one card in tarot. So, you know, I do feel that um, self-imposed prison, you know, of the um, Eight of Swords is basically trapping himself. That is like a mental prison, but I also think it translates into a physical prison. And speaking of prison, Doria did go to prison which is what primarily is part of a huge wound of Megan and how all this began. So I was requested to do, how's Doria? What's Doria up to? Doria's pretty malignant herself. She's very covert narcissist. She stays low. She stays as a wallflower. She stays in the shadows. She's not like Megan where she's malignant. She really wants that limelight. She loves the attention. Doria tries to stay a little bit in the shadows. I think she enjoys some of it. But she's still somewhat kind of off to the side. She likes to be sort of the backseat passenger of going along for the ride. And she enjoys it because she's equally toxic. And she doesn't see any problem with it. So let's get some energy with Doria and how Doria is coping with where her daughter's at. And what's going on in Doria's life. What is going on with toxic Doria? Toxic criminal Doria who cooked drugs allegedly entertainment purposes but i'm just saying that i do truly mean it and yes i do have some also i have some spammers hello spammers so if you're here and you're not at tarot by andy channel the authentic channel you're watching the spammer so yes there's a spammer 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 look i got two of them yes two of them no i will not fill out the paperwork so doria doria i'm not gonna let you come after me like a crook like doria here we go doria Doria, who actually is not a social worker. She never fully got her license, by the way. And she lies about that, too. Or Megan lied about that. Just to make her sound more important and more caring and empathetic and, and takes care of people. That was part of it, too. So that was a lie, too. That's that's Megan's uh, 
page of swords upright, page of swords upright are liars, page of swords in reverse actually tell the truth. So that's Megan being the problem child, trying to make it look like everything's right. She's, wor she's worried that people are going to spy on her mom and, and find out the truth. So she had to jump into, into that uh, fire pit and try to correct it. Which also leads me to say also that um, the non-disclosure agreements from the working uh, individuals from the palace who Megan had problems with are afraid of Megan going, going to court with Megan. They think Megan's going to take them to court. Uh, because the non-disclosure agreements are going to be lifted in 2025. So FYI, I don't know how true it is, but that's what I'm hearing. So um, yeah, 2025 apparently is when everything could come out about Megan's uh, time in the palace and how she treated people. So I think she is going to probably try and lawyer up to protect all that. And that's probably what she will do because she thinks she's that queen of swords upright. Really, she's queen of swords in reverse. She's ruthless. She's she's absolutely malignant. She's illogical. She's terrifyingly cruel. So she will do that, being a terrifyingly cruel queen of swords in reverse. She will not tell the truth. She cannot accept reality. All her analytical decision-making is all false, and it's out of psychosis, and she is a complete liar like her mother. So Doria is at a ten of swords in reverse. Doria is at a rock bottom. She does not know what to do. She needs to return to her old values and she needs to needs to heal some wounds right here. So she's feeling kind of wounded by her own daughter more than likely and backstabbed by her own daughter. So now she's trying to accept it and try to probably pick up the pieces and see if she can recover from this. Uh, difficulty accepting what's going on with her daughter. She's trying to find some courage. Uh, she's going to hold on to the past with denial. Nope, she did not do prison. Megan fix that for her or try to. Uh, she's going to try to let go of the path for now. So she's probably going to uh, keep her distance, keep a little bit of distance. She still enjoys things, so I still think she will come around because she enjoys it. It's not exactly what she was hoping would happen. Things didn't go as planned with the Ten of Swords in reverse. So basically, yeah, she thought she'd probably get more riches from Megan. She probably thought Megan would bring in more riches. I think she knew what her daughter was capable of, but she probably thought it would end much better for, for Megan, that Megan would probably be uh, an A-lister and the money would be flowing in. And so it just didn't go as she expected. So she is gonna deny her past as well. Uh, she feels very defeated. Uh, the end is here. And things just did not go as she assumed they would. So it's like literally she has been literally backstabbed by her own daughter too. Uh, she's also had to deal with relapsing from addictions. It's a relapsing from addictions, upright and reverse. She cannot cope or deny any longer what her daughter is, what's been done. Uh, her only option is to accept and move on. And she's going to try to deny the past. She's out of prison. She's been in prison. Yeah, there we go. The prison card. She's been in prison. She's been released. Uh, and I don't think she, so she's going to deny it. She's going to deny she went to prison. So T Bauer is going to put out a book talking about her past and she's going to go in denial mode. She's going to hope to keep it, keep it out. Uh, so she's going to deny prison. Deny, deny, deny. So there's the Megan effect right there. That's where Megan gets the lies. So you just lie. When it, when you don't like it, Megan, you, you create your own truth. It doesn't matter if it's a lie. You just stick with it. If they can't prove it, you just keep denying until they have absolute 100% proof. Take it from me. I went to prison. <laughs> uh, under the deck. Under the deck. Yeah. She's been broken hearted. She's been shattered. And she's in heal mode right here. She's trying to trying to heal her, her, uh, her body as well. Uh, she knows that Megan will work against her and she's in constant heal mode. So that's a very painful relationship. Since she got out of prison, she tried to make it right with Megan and heal the situation in essence. But she likes to deny that anything went wrong. So she's denying guilt. Focal point, she's going to blaze a path and she's going to defend herself and she's going to have high boundaries. So she's got high boundaries with Megan. She has to. And she has to kind of hold herself up to protect herself, put herself in a little protective bubble so that she actually can heal herself. So she understands how toxic and painful Megan is. And Megan's prone to destroying people, including her own mother. 
So Doria is not the only one. Doria sees the pattern in essence. She can't, she knows what her daughter is. She tried to be friends with Megan, but they aren't, they are not friends. Support's not quite there. The support's in the back. Megan never truly supported her. It never truly has been there. So it's a very platonic fake support of pain and suffering, high boundaries, denying the past. I, yeah, I was in prison. I tried to be, you know, be supportive while I was locked up, but how can you support and raise a glass when you're, when you're locked up? You really can't until you're out of prison. Then she tried to recover, but it just ended up in pain and needing healing. It never, they couldn't go the distance. She can't go the distance. Megan can't go the distance. They just give up. They they go into isolation. This is the loner in tarot, this position here. Uh, the Knight of Pentacles in reverse wants to be alone. So she wants to be alone. Uh, she's too lazy. She's withdrawn. She's going to give up. She's That's just impeded progress with Megan. She's trying to avoid confrontation with Megan. And Megan's, it's just bad news. Every time she talks to Megan, it's just nothing but bad news. It is a prisoner of the mind, and she got herself out of a literal prison, so she really doesn't want to put herself in that mind space. She knows the truth about Megan with the Ace of Swords. She has clarity of thought, and she knows the complete truth, and she also knows that Megan likes to create conflicts, and it's also a conflict position. Since she knows the truth, she's very conflicted because she knows it can never work out. Megan can't do anything. Working with Megan is impossible. It's just not going to happen. So nothing works with Megan. Megan is a wash and repeat pattern of psychological pattern of a failure. She has nothing but falling out. Megan will never back down. Megan will always create wars. So she probably knew the day they were getting married, I had this feeling watching Doria, that Doria had this glimmer of, oh my God, what is she going to do next? I really felt that strong energy vibe coming off her, sitting in that, that, that seat by herself, I just caught some some micro expressions that made me go, hmm, something's really bad's going to happen here, and she knows it. She knows it. She got a little bit of smug pleasures with a little guilt, and oh, Jesus, what is she getting herself into? She cannot stick this out. She's going to create a war, and she knew it. She knew she's nothing but pain and suffering, and Megan would defend herself. And that anybody who supports her, she's going to cut them out and create a conflict and say, oh, they're not backing down. We, I have a war on my hands. They weren't going to give me what I wanted. This is never going to work. If they can't give her and they don't back down to Megan's super ego because her super ego is on fire, it's game over. It's game over with the super ego. When, the, when you have that super ego intact, which really comes out looking like a devil card because they're that controlling, there is no controlling her. No one's going to back down. No one's going to back down, so that's why she keeps having fallouts with everyone. It's complete resentment. Complete resentment because nobody will give in to her demands. So it's just, it's battle and betrayal. So this is why she betrays everyone. Because her mind's a battle. Her mind's a battlefield. And she can't control other people. And then she claims other people are trying to take her out. Everyone's trying to take me out. No one will back down. Really, it's in her own mind. And that's why she goes around and she destroys and hurts people. Because it's all in her own head. Megan really is caught up in prisoner of her mind. And I think Dorian knows it. Wow, I got out of prison. But I think my daughter creates so much war. Maybe she's challenged and could end up in prison. I don't want to end up in prison with my daughter because of the war she starts. And I know the truth. Uh-oh, how is this going to go down? Not so good. So she knows Megan needs to tell the truth. She knows the truth about Megan. Megan's a problem, child. Megan needs to speak the truth. Megan needs to speak the truth. So Megan, with her war, doesn't land in prison. I think she's concerned that Megan will end up in prison like she was. And she needs to speak the truth. She creates these conflicts and wars, and she breaks the law. She totally breaks the law. Um, she's had a fall from grace. She's fallen from grace. She knows the truth about her problem child. She knows her, her, she knows there's nothing but uh, poor judgment with here. There's absolutely no peace with her. There's no strength. Megan might think she's a strong intellectual person who can work. She can't. She's lazy. She knows Megan's lazy. Nothing works with Megan. She's too lazy. And through that laziness, she just has no strength. She's just a weak individual who forces other people 
who's into hedonism. She won't work. She's too much into hedonism, like her mama. They're both into hedonism. They get sadism pleasures. It's all about image control. Tell the truth for image control. I need to avoid problems for myself. So it's like a fake strength. It's, it's a platonic fake mask wearing strength. They think they're strong and peaceful and people should trust me. That's the other thing with antisocials that you'll hear from them quite often. So this is a red flag for you. Another red flag that I got from one of my toxic uh, connections. She would often say to me, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? And I thought that was interesting that she would always ask me, do you trust me? Well, the reason why she kept asking me if I trusted her is because she was a dark force. She was actually an evil strength who had no inner peace for herself and she had to manipulate me. So she had to manipulate the trust. That's why they'll ask you, do you trust me? Next time someone keeps asking me if I trust them, I'll say no. You keep asking me, there's, there must be a red flag if you keep asking me if I need to trust you. Someone who's truly trustworthy doesn't need to keep asking you if you trust me. They're doing it because they want to manipulate you, because they're abusive, because they're a coward, and that's their way of getting control over you. Megan's no different. Dory is the same. Final outcome, they just want to win. Win, win, win. Uh, a lot of readers will say this is a narcissist card too because they must win. They must win hedonism through manipulation, image control through sheer force. And that's their way of winning. They cannot win with gentle strength, high integrity and character, not being loud and abrasive. We got loud and abrasive right here. This is a very abrasive person. Doria gave birth to an, a, to an abrasive person. Doria is abrasive. They create wars everywhere. That's why she ended up in prison, got out. But they're not that gentle strength. They don't, this here, strength upright has high integrity, character, strength. They can do things. They can, they have self-discipline. They're just not loud. They get things done. Kind of like for me, this card is like uh, Prince William here. People trust him. He's peaceful. He gets things done. It's with kind strength. With kind strength, you get so much more done. But they do it through sheer force and dark forces. Total hedonism. Very dark, dark person with sadistic pleasures. They get sadistic pleasures of doing it through a very harsh way with wars and winning. So they enjoy the win. This is very antisocial. They know they're starting the conflict. They do it with sheer intention and they know exactly what they're doing. And they also know they're too lazy to put the work in. But they want to win. So I'm going to do it through sheer force and sadism to get my way. I will break you. I will hurt you. I will destroy you. But I'll be okay and I'll heal and I'll mend. Even though I know what I did. And I got out of prison for doing that. I don't want to go back to prison. I've done it before. I don't want to go there. So I'm going to deny it. I'm going to try to protect myself here. I'm going to pretend like I have um, connections and family and friends, but I really don't. Nobody wants to have anything to do with me anymore. Family and friends do not want to deal and mend and do, have anything to do with Doria. They're in the past. The, the family has dumped Doria, in essence. They do not connect with her. So at the center of the deck, the past is gone. The future is gone with Megan. Uh, letting go of the past with the Six of Cups. It's, it's uh, Loyalty was there. But as idolizing the past, she's going to always idolize probably the sum of good times she had, the welcoming feelings, but the past is gone. It is, you know, it was enjoyable, but it's now gone. So it was enjoyable. She's enjoying it, but it's, it's going out the door and she's going to try to restore order. She's, she, she knows that King Charles is going to restore order and the past of, of Megan being in the family is done and over with. She was welcomed, uh, but it's bittersweet. And she's going to idolize the time that Megan actually made it as a working royal. And King Charles is going to have to let her go. And he welcomed her, but it's letting you go. Six, of, you know, because he wanted harmony. So he's going to restore order and keep the power for himself. Uh, and there's just too many bittersweet she will definitely idolize that time of meeting King Charles, who's now the king. She enjoyed it. She enjoyed it. She thought they were going to charge forward and things were going to be great. She enjoyed it. So she's going to idolize when she chummied up next to King Charles. She's going to be, she's really going to savor that. 
and she's she is going to have mental challenges with it the splitting the splitting energy friend foe black and white thinking so she will have splitting feelings and challenges in her emotions about him oh one day she'll think he was great another day she'll think he's cruel but she knows he's going to restore order which she will probably split him black and say he's cruel wow well, wasn't that cruel he did that to my daughter and let her go yeah, I thought everything's going to work out. I thought my daughter would glow up. When she, when when he wouldn't let Megan glow up, she splits him black. You know, he you know my daughter was trying to glow up. That's why he's letting her go because she's too much of a star power. She she draws too much attention. She's just the shining light uh, of peace and and pleasure. Uh, you know, but she did have a lot of peace and pleasure meeting him. But there's this whole splitting thing going on. She splits just like Megan. And that split, that splitting behavior is very moody. It's very borderline personality disorder. Uh, is definitely cluster B personality disorder. Because all the cluster Bs, psych, psychopaths, narcissists, histrionics, uh, they all, sociopaths, they all do splitting. All of them under the cluster B do splitting. So she also has most likely allegedly entertainment purposes, plus the fact that she has been a drug addict, allegedly entertainment purposes, has a cluster B mental health disorder, and she uses drugs to cope and tame down the traits and the negative symptoms of splitting of moodiness, the moodiness. To control her moodiness, she did it. So that's why, so this is what it's telling me here. And she knows that... Charles cannot be depend upon, dependent on. He's not going to be dependable. You're not here. I'm. Don't run to me. Don't run to me. I'm not going to be here for you. King of Pentacles uprights uh, is someone who is a parental figure who is very generous and is going to help you and you can rely on him. She knows that she can no longer rely on Charles because that's done and over with. It's it's let go. It, the past is gone with Charles. So she's going to split him black because he's removing Megan. She's not welcome anymore. And it's over with. I wish I can call him. I can't get anything from him. He's not going to give me anything because he's restoring order. Eventually he will restore order in some way, which definitely will be removing Megan. Now, when it comes to Harry, it's very different spread. As we know, he's going to jump in to save Harry. But when it comes to Megan, he's not going to save Megan. Megan will not be protected. He will not protect Megan. He's actually going to do the opposite. He's going to he's going to be very uncaring and cold. He's going to tell her no. He's going to tell Doria no. And there's domination here. He's going to make sure they don't get what they want. He will not use a lot of common sense. He's going to be pretty anger, angry here. Oh, she's not my daughter-in-law. She's not my daughter-in-law. I'm, I'm not the parental figure here. Don't look at me as daddy. Even though she, he walked her down the aisle, he, 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 he embraced her. He welcomed her. He enjoyed her. He tried glowing her up and purifying and bleaching her past. Her past is really destructive. We know it. It's going to come out. And he bleached and purified her past through domination as well and welcomed her. And look what she did. So he is basically, she has a renewed interest. She has a renewed interest. She'd like to, but she knows it's going to be platonic. And she knows Megan has a renewed interest because there's that page of wands in reverse I was talking about earlier. The page of wands in reverse is super ego. It's a super ego card. Her Megan's super ego is recharged up and she has a renewed interest to go back in. But it's strictly temperamental, reckless, incredibly dangerous. And she would pretend, this is what I've said before, this dangerous, reckless, childlike mind who thought that she was charismatic, fun, and loyal, good friend. Megan's not a good friend. In the Page of Wands in Reverse, they're not, they're not your friend. They never were your friend. They were never her friend because she's a four of cups. She's a four of cups. Upright, the four of cups doesn't feel anything for anyone. Nobody's good enough. So she rejected them, took off. Now she has a renewed interest, but that renewed interest is very temperamental, dangerous, and reckless. She's very much, she's a danger to the family. 
She's a complete reckless danger. She, this here, if they come in, you better get out of the way. This is a very dangerous arrested development child who's not mature. They can do horrific things, horrific things out of, out of basically, um, negative fire inside, not grounded individual, total lack of confidence. Her, when her confidence is down, she has a renewed interest. Okay. I'm down and out. I have a renewed interest to come in. Can I come in and you can make me comfortable again? No, no, you can't come in. The family's saying, no, you're cruel. You're ruthless. You're cruel and you're ruthless. You're malicious. No, you created a burden for yourself. Go get a job, improve yourself. You made your pat. This is your, this is your, your lifestyle. This is what you chose. You left us stay out, make your own money. You're cruel and ruthless. We do not accept you anymore. You shattered our family emotionally. You are not acceptable. I know you would like to atone with us. You want atonement? No, we're telling you no. We're telling you no. It's over. Goodbye. We're saying goodbye to you. We're saying goodbye to you. So Dory knows it's over with. And no, Dory knows Megan's going to look for her next opportunity. Where's my next opportunity? So Megan will always look for the next opportunity. And she knows that she can probably try and make it happen because Megan's malignant. Megan's malignant. But she will always suffer from losses because whatever she creates, it's not enough. And then I'm going to create detachment, mourning, and suffering because that's what she does. It's a pattern. It's the cycle. So when you look at such as a card as the Page of Swords or the Page of Wands in reverse, and you're dealing with a difficult, problematic person, you got to look at the cycles. It has to be more than one time. Just one time and a spread's not going to do it. You need to see it over a pattern of time. And then you know for sure it wasn't just a bad day, a bad month. I'm going through, you know, I lost my job or I'm going through a divorce or I'm, you know, I just lost my mother, my father. I'm going through a difficult time. It's not when it's not just a difficult time and you know that that super ego that's been triggered is there to stay. It takes, it takes seeing the cycle. You got to, it's a cycle. When people are diagnosed, it's, it's, it's a pattern of behavior over a couple of years. When it starts to go into a couple, you know, there, you know, something's up, something very disturbing is happening. And that's definitely going to start with the page of swords upright. That's your problem, child. Your problem, child is going to become a problem. They're not going to get better. They will probably always be a problem child because once they get that mental illness, it's for life. They can only manage it, cope it, deal with it, but it can never truly be fixed. It only can be managed. Uh, and a lot of those antisocials will hold themselves up. I expect Megan eventually will hold herself up because she knows she's unacceptable. No one will want her. She will be an outcast of society. She will always be looking for help. She'll always be looking for charity, but everyone's going to know it's conditional. It's platonic. It's extortion. It's all one-sided. People will always know that she's going to have a renewed interest, but she'll walk away. People will always know she's a tower crashing, trying to rise up for herself, but she'll take other people down to rebuild herself. There's no hope for her, you guys. There isn't any hope for her. There really isn't. And not much for Doria either, because people know what Doria is. The truth is out on Doria. Megan's just like her mother. I hope you enjoyed this. Till next time, like and subscribe. Bye, you guys.